Um, so the stories for um, this month are actually um, all to do with um, supporting our um, World Book Day at school and also World of Work. Um, so the book that I thought I would read to you today um, is all to do with um, a job that somebody does which I've always found very fascinating, something that I would have quite maybe enjoyed doing myself. Um, and it's a, a detective. So um, this one is actually Enola Holmes. Um, we've got a couple of these books in the library, so if you wanted to read more once I've read you the first chapter, um, then please do. Um, they've also made uh, this story into a Netflix film, um, which you can obviously watch if you've got Netflix too. Okay, so um, we're going to find out um, what this story is all about. Um, it's uh, the case of the missing Marquess. Okay. So, <clears throat> chapter the first. I would very much like to know why my mother named me Enola, which backwards spells alone. Mother was, or perhaps still is, fond of ciphers, and she must have um, had something in mind, whether foreboding or a sort of left-handed blessing, or already plans, even though my father had not yet passed away. In any event, you will do very well in your, on your own, Enola, she would tell me nearly every day as I was growing up. Indeed, this was her usual absent-minded farewell as she went off with sketchbook brushes and watercolours to roam the countryside. And indeed, alone was very much how she left me when, on the July evening of my 14th birthday, she neglected to return to Fendel House, uh, sorry, Fendel Hall, our home. As I had my celebration anyway, with Lane the butler and his wife the cook, the absence of my mother did not at first trouble me. Although um, cordial enough, when we, met um, when we met, mother and I seldom interfered in one another's concerns. I assumed that some urgent business kept her elsewhere, especially, especially as she had instructed Mrs Lane to give me certain parcels at tea time. Mother's gifts to me consisted of A. A drawing kit Paper, lead pencils A pen knife, sharpening them um, a Rubber um, erasers All cleverly arranged in a flat wooden box that opened into an easel um, a, a B. A stout book entitled The Meanings of Flowers Including also notes upon the messages conveyed by fans Handkerchiefs, sealed wax and postage stamps and C, a much smaller booklet of ciphers. While I could draw only to a limited degree, Mother encouraged the small knack I had. She knew I enjoyed my sketching as I enjoyed reading al almost any book on whatever topic, but as for ciphers, she knew I did not, did not much care for them. Nevertheless, she had made this little book for me uh, with her own hands, as I could plainly see folding and stitching together pages she had decorated with dainty watercolour flowers. Obviously she had been at work on this gift for some time. She did not lack thought for me, I told myself, firmly, several times throughout the evening. While I had no idea where Mother might be, I expected she would either come home or send a message during the night. I slept peacefully enough. However, the next morning, Lane shook his head. No, the lady of the house had not returned. No, there had been no word from her. Outside, grey rain fell, fitting my mood which grew more and more uneasy. After breakfast, I trotted back upstairs to my bedroom, a pleasant refuge where um, the wardrobe, washstand, dresser and so forth were painted white, with pink and blue stencil posies around the edges. Cottage furniture, folk, folk called it. Cheap stuff suitable only for a child, but I liked it most days. Not today. I could not have stayed indoors. Indeed, I could not sit down, except hastily to pull galoshes over my boots. I wore shirt and knickerbockers, comfortable clothing that had previously belonged to my older brothers, and over these I threw a waterproof. All rubbery, I thumped downstairs and took an umbrella from the stand in the hallway. Then I exited through the kitchen, telling Mrs Lane, I am going to have a look around. Odd, 
These were the same words I said nearly every day when I went out, to look for things, though generally I didn't know what. Anything. I would climb trees just to see what might be there. Snail shells with bands of maroon and yellow, nut clusters, birds' nests, and if I found a magpie's nest, I would look for things in it. Shoe buttons, bits of shiny ribbon, somebody's lost earring. I would pretend that something of great value was lost and I was searching. Only this time I was not pretending. Mrs Lane too knew it was different this time. She should have called. Where's your hat Miss Enola? For I never wore one but she said nothing as she watched me go. Go to have a look around for my mother. I really thought I could find her myself. Once out of sight of the kitchen, I began running back and forth like a beagle, hunting for any sign of my mother. Yesterday morning, as a birthday treat, I had been allowed to lie abed. Therefore, I had not seen my mother go out, but assuming that she had, as usual, spent some hours drawing studies of flowers and plants, I looked for her first in the grounds of Ferndale. Managing her estate, mother liked to let growing things alone. I rambled through flower gardens run wild, lawns invaded by gorse and brambles, forests shrouded in bindweed and ivy vines, and all the while the grey sky swept rain on me. The old collie dog, Reginald, trotted along with me until he grew tired of getting wet, then left to find shelter. Sensible creature. Soaked to my knees, I knew I should do likewise, but I could not. My anxiety had accelerated along with my gait, until now terror drove me like a lash. Terror that my mother lay out there somewhere, hurt or sick, or a fear I could not entirely deny, as mother was far from young. She might have been struck down by heart failure. She might be, but no one could not even think it so ba uh, badly. There were other words, expired, crossed over, passed away, gone to join my father. No, please. One would think that, as mother and I were not close, I should have not minded her disappearance very much. But quite the contrary, I felt dreadful because it seemed all my fault if anything had gone badly with her. Always I felt to blame for, for whatever, for breathing, because I had been more indecently late in mother's life. A scandal, a burden, you see. And always I had counted upon setting things right after I was grown. Some day I hoped somehow I would make up, um, make of my life a shining light that would lift me out of the shadow of disgrace. And then you understand, my mother would love me. So she had to be alive, and I must find her. Searching, I crisscrossed forest where generations of squires and hunting hares and grouse. I climbed down and up the shelving, fern-draped rocks of the grotto for which the estate was named. A place I loved, but today I did not linger. I continued to the edge of the park, where the woods ended and the farmlands began. <clears throat> I searched onwards into the fields, for Mother may uh, very well have gone there for the sake of the flowers. Being not too far from the city, Ferndale tenants had taken to farming bluebells and pansies and lilies instead of vegetables, as they could better prosper by delivering fresh blossoms daily to Covent Garden. Here grew rows of roses, crops of sunflowers, flaming patches of dahlias and poppies, all for London. Looking at the field of flowers, I dreamt of a bright city where every day smiling maids placed fresh bouquets in every chamber of the mansions, where every evening gentle women and royal ladies decked and scented themselves, their hair and gowns with um, violets, London, where, but today, the acres of flowers hung sodden with rain, and my dreams of London lasted only a breath or two, before evaporating like the mist steaming up from the fields, vast fields, miles of fields. Where was my mother? In my dreams, you see, my mother dreams, not the London ones, I would find her myself. I would be a heroine. She would gaze up at me in, in gratitude and adoration when I rescued her. But those were dreams and I was a fool. 
So far I have searched only a quarter of the estate, much less the farmlands. If mother lay injured, she'd give up the ghost before I could find her all by myself. Turning, I hurried back to the hall. There, Lane and Mrs. Lane swooped upon me like a pair of turtle doves upon the nest. He plucked sopping coat and umbrella and boots from me, she hustling me towards the kitchen to get warm. While it was not her place to scold me, she, she made her views plain. A person would have to be sim simple-minded to stay out in the rain for hours on end, she told the big coal burning stove as she levered one of its lids off. Don't matter whether a person is common or aristocrat. If a per person catches a chill, it could kill her. This to the tea kettle she was placing on the stove. Consumption is no respecter of persons or circumstances. To the tea canister. There was no need for me to respond, for she wasn't talking to me. She would not have permitted she would not have been permitted to say anything to the sort to me. It's all very well for a person to be of an independent mind without going looking for uh, quincy or pleurisy or pneumonia or worse to the teacups. Then she began to face me and her tone also and her tone also about faced. Begging your pardon, Miss Enola, would you like luncheon? Won't you draw your chair closer to the stove? I'll brown like toast if I do. No, I do not require luncheon. Has there been any word of my mother? Although I already knew the answer, for Lane or Mrs Lane would have told me at once if they'd heard anything. Still, I could not help asking. Nothing, miss. She swaddled her hands in her apron as if wrapping a baby. I stood. Then there are some notes I must write. Miss Enola, there's no fire in the library. Let me bring the things to you here at the table, miss. I felt just as glad not to have to sit in the great leather chair in that gloomy room. Into the warm kitchen, Mrs Lane fetched paper, imprinted with our family crest the ink pot and the fountain pen from the library desk, along with some blotting paper. Dipping the pen into the ink on the cream-coloured stationery, I wrote a few words to the local constabulary, informing them that my mother seemed to have gone astray and requesting them to kindly organise a search for her. Then I sat thinking, did I really have to? Unfortunately, yes, I could put it off no longer. More slowly, I wrote another note, one that would soon wing it uh, for miles via wire to be printed out by a teletype machine as Lady Eudora Burnett Holmes missing since yesterday. Stop. Please advise. Stop. Enola Holmes. I directed this telegram to Mycroft Holmes of Pall Mall in London and also the same message to Sherlock Holmes of Baker Street also in London, my brothers. Okay, so that's the first chapter. Um, so if you enjoyed that, you can um, get the book out, as I said, from the library um, and read on to see whether Enola Holmes actually does manage to find her mother or not. Okay, um, I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you very much. Bye.